So every single patient who you have with an acute stroke must get some form of imaging with CTA or MRI head and neck, even if you're outside the window. And most hospitals will have their own stroke protocol. The moment you suspect stroke, you call a stroke code. The neurologist is gonna run there, right? You guys are gonna run there. First thing, you're always gonna do a full-blown exam, check vitals, check these things. Next important thing, immediately is imaging, okay? Because clinically, you suspect a stroke, but the imaging is gonna prove if the patient actually had a stroke or not. Now, on a CT scan, are you gonna be able to prove that the patient had a stroke? No. Then why are you doing it? You're only doing it to rule out hemorrhage, period. It's not gonna tell you an acute infarct in this point, right? The CT head is going to help you rule out a bleed. If it was a bleed, that's a hemorrhagic stroke, fine. We're not gonna deal with that today. We're gonna to talk about ischemic stroke. So, one thing you're gonna do is CT head, but apart from that, another important, the next test that you should always think about is an imaging to image your circle of villus. Now, you're gonna get a CTA of your head and neck. Yes, you do give contrast and you want to see your circular villus. You want to see if there's a large vessel occlusion. What if the patient's got a really bad kidney? You can do an MRA, right? It's not always that you have to do a CTA. Whenever you're doing an MRA on the context of stroke, it's without contrast. So if somebody's crammed and it's bad, you don't want to pick CTA. So you'll pick MRA in those patients, right? Similarly, if somebody's got a pacemaker that's not MRI compatible, then you go with CTA. 